NBC's own Mr. Bob Costas. Bob, how are you tonight? I'm fine, but naturally filled with trepidation as anyone would be at the prospect oh, of being involved in something like this. You're telling me. Now, uh, have you ever covered a dog sled racing event? I, I have not, but I'm told that conditions for an event like this are all but ideal today. Oh, that's good. Subarctic temperatures, howling winds, and as you can see, a fresh dusting of snow <laughs> on the ground. <laughs> this man's been under hypnosis. <laughs> now, uh, Bob, can you, in a couple of words, uh, describe the feeling out here on the sixth floor? Well, the atmosphere is tense. It, it's one of breath anticipation and looking at these huskies I'd say they're every bit as eager as we are all right uh, Bob is gonna call the race from the finish line I'm heading there now all right Bob uh, good luck to you Paul uh, Bob I think you need this Thanks. Oh. Uh, now uh, Paul and I are gonna go down there with the dogs and the sleds we'll get ready if I left anything out here okay we're all set ladies and gentlemen we're moments away from the greatest spectacle in racing uh, we're gonna pause for a commercial and the great dog sled race will begin Come on back. This is Bob Pastors back in New York, and I see we have just about reached the traditional pause up at the other end of the hallway. That means we are moments away from the start of the race. Briefly, these are the rules which govern all international dog sled competitions. Each competitor, in this case David and Paul, must start with one foot on the slide, side runner of the sled, another foot on the brake. Once the brake has been released, they can use the free foot to push off the ground for propulsion and the winner of course is the first sled across the yellow ribbon marking the finish line in front of me one last precaution which has been taken the man you see behind me is licensed paramedic Al Frisch and Al is standing by with comforting blankets in the event that any of the competitors should suffer from exposure. We are just about ready to get it underway. Let's throw it to our own Jimmy Fitzgerald, who is manning the starting gun. Jimmy, are you ready? All right, then. On your mark. Get set. Go. And they break quickly with the starting gun. And the addition of the beaver on you. Clubs, apparently has You're not in Husky. Well, it was the early favorite in the betting I, line. Handicapped I, by the additional weight, I, has fallen behind. And David Letterman, surging to the finish okay, line, okay. is Where an easy on? winner right over okay. Paul Schaefer. Nice job, guys. But no cigar. What was it, Paul? Was it the pelt weighed you down? Where did I go wrong? Ho, ho, hi. Oh, <laughs> the dogs are now oh. on, the, on the elevator oh. looking for a chair. Well, uh, this is how those Bolivian soccer riots usually start. Is everybody all right? Oh, uh, boy, that was exciting. Uh, oh. A disappointed loser, but first, as is customary, we speak to the winner. Huddled here against the chill. Dave, can you single out a turning point in the race? Um... I, I think Paul uh, had it accurately uh, when he announced earlier that uh, I may have had the stronger lead dog. It certainly felt that way to me, especially coming out of that dangerous shoot. You know, a couple of years ago, we lost some Norwegians down there. <laughs> and <laughs> with any big building in this city. And we all remember that with, with a great deal of sorrow. We Dave, do. this has to be satisfying because of some of the wise remarks that Paul made during the week about what was likely to happen, I guess you've shut him up now. Yeah, pretty much, uh, and, and I think we're ready for the uh, the Nationals. Now, let's, are we going to take a look at this uh, excitement, Bob? Oh, I think we should. Okay. I think we should. All right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, this is, uh, the one in the front is Minstrel, I believe, the, uh, the guy on the right side of the screen. And we were doing about 60 right there. <laughs> this is the, the most frightening part of the course. Uh, they stretch this yellow line across the uh, yes. end there. And you see, I actually had to start breaking even before I crossed the finish line. It was just an unbelievable moment in sports. And it looks to me like Paul, is Paul even on the same floor? Can you see? Well, let's, let's talk to him here. Paul, it seemed like Dave grabbed the lead. Oh, my. Well, uh -oh. these, these are the things which happen on live television, ladies and gentlemen. And assignment four. Okay, I'll go ahead and do it, and uh, we'll just take this, uh... <laughs> well, we really... 
Well, I really can't follow that. There's a little really something for that. the maintenance department, ladies and gentlemen. Like said, really. It seemed as if... I think my team is expressing really how we all felt <laughs> and, and how we did, and uh, I'm a little f***ed up myself. Really. Uh... Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. A fitting tribute to the Royal Canadian Mounted Police on this, the 64th anniversary of their founding. We must continue with Late Night, although I realize it will all be anticlimactic after this. And I think so, absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you very much. You are welcome, David. Tough luck to you, Paul. Well, thank you very much.